Hi, welcome. I'm Anita Smart, and I'm joined today by my colleague Nicole Kemper from Clinovation's Government and Health to talk about a project we're working on that seeks input and engagement from industry to understand interoperability measurement by health IT developers. This project stems from MACRA, which uh, declares it a national objective to achieve widespread interoperability through use of EHRs and actually requires HHS to measure the extent to which this objective is being met. So what that means is that there is a need to assess the progress of healthcare providers that electronically engage in the four domains of interoperability. That's send, receive, find, and integrate information, as well as those that use information to inform clinical decision-making. So historically, measurements have been derived from nationally representative surveys, such as the National EHR Survey for Ambulatory Data, AHA, the American Hospital Association had an annual survey with a health IT supplement for a couple of years that's offered some inpatient hospital data. And the surveys have asked respondents about send, receive, find, and integrate, but they're susceptible to variance by respondents and require time on the part of respondents um, versus something that is automatically collected and potentially reported through the EHR. And if you haven't seen them, take a look at the numerous data briefs that have been published by ONC that offer some quick stats on these data sources from surveys. But our goal is to identify and understand interoperability measurement capabilities and also understand the types and levels of exchange that are happening today as a foundation for considering future measures. And one thing to note, we are not evaluating or rating measures through this project nor will we be identifying results by vendor. Our goal here to actually is to work in conjunction with industry and vendors, help I also called health IT developers, you'll hear us refer to it interchangeably. We're actually working with the vendor and developer community as well as customers to gain these insights for this project. So we are working together uh, for this project that is funded by ONC. Uh, and uh, Clinovation's Government and Health was the prime contract awardee from ONC to lead this effort. We've brought in a stakeholder engagement partner, HIMSS, and they are working with us to not only bring in the insights from the HIMSS interoperability community, as well as uh, venues such as EHRA and other mechanisms of engaging not only the vendor market, but as well as uh, customers. And last but certainly not least, we want you, so whether you're a health IT developer, a customer, an interoperability expert, to join the conversation and help set a national network framework regarding interoperability measurement of health IT products. By reviewing interoperability measurement activities, we can better understand building blocks of interoperability and determine the most effective and valuable areas to measure. There's a number of areas here on this slide, and all of these different building blocks offer different insights into what we should measure, why we should measure it, or an understanding into barriers to advancing interoperability measurement. Nicole will cover our project approach and initial findings, and I'll be back to talk about what, uh, talk about what we're investigating next. Thanks, Anita. To gather the information necessary to inform this effort, we designed an approach to convene, collect, and collaborate. So we're convening with stakeholders who attend connectathons like this and other conferences and meetings so that we can share information about the project and engage to collect insights from the people who support and advance interoperability every day. We are conducting interviews with members of vendor organizations who focus on interoperability, measurement, and government affairs, as well as their customers. And we're also working with our partner, HIMSS, to leverage their activities with the EHRA and other interoperability communities. In our initial collect approach, we are conducting a series of open-ended discussions guided by these topics. What is the landscape of current measurement capabilities? What are the factors that drive 
or hinder measurement efforts by health IT users and developers. And for measures and tracking approaches that do exist, we are gathering information about their implementation and the effort that is exerted by health IT users to obtain and work with the data. This leads us to then to a dissection of measures structures, definitions, and development process. Not surprising to anyone listening to this, converse, to this presentation, in this initial phase of collect, we are finding that if there is an action for data exchange, it is tracked. While the architecture exists to track through audit logs, there is work though involved to get the data from an audit log, develop a report that has to be used by the vendor or the end user. We also know that measuring interoperability comes down to being able to identify the what, the how, the who, and use. So across transactions and vendors, what is exchanged? How is it exchanged? Who are the trading partners involved in exchange? And how do we pinpoint the use of exchanged information in a way that tells us something meaningful. Those at this Connectathon know that the complexities of interoperability make these concepts very nuanced. This project aims to understand how the underlying architecture and mechanics of exchange can yield significant differences that are salient for comparable measurement. For example, a measure that is commonly looked at because of its role in the Promoting Interoperability Program involves incorporating a Summary of Care Record, or a CCDA, into the patient record. In our conversations, we have found that for one vendor, 50% of exchange with other products goes through non-promoting interoperability mechanisms like care equality, and for another vendor, 15,000 inbound direct messages go through a centralized HISP as compared to 2.5 million CCDAs exchanged through care equality and Commonwealth combined. Unless measurement takes into account the granularity of the how exchange incurs, we can't get to a full picture for the what is exchange. Another component of the PI program looks at patient access to health information stored at EHRs. And again, the underlying foundation has a significant impact on what measurement can tell us. One vendor reported that Apple Health queries four times a day for every patient. And for another, there may be a lot of API use at a customer because that customer doesn't have a portal set up. And these nuances and differences lead to a critical examination of the value and the meaning behind volume and transaction counts. And these details underscore the importance of gathering insights on the who and the what behind exchange so that variance in the counts can be better understood. So this is a slide with a breakdown of information exchange scenarios that, again, is nothing, uh, not likely nothing new for most of you. We hear a lot about how measuring transaction volume isn't a useful measure of interoperability. So in taking this approach, before we define what is a useful measure that's listed all the way to the right um, conceptually, and that's certainly not exhaustive, let's understand what we can measure. And given that volume or count, let's try to dig in and understand what it tells us and also what it doesn't tell us. So we hear a consistent theme across interoperability leaders at vendors, as well as at customers, that we need multiple types of exchange and they need to coexist. So while you see across the top, the send, find, integrate and use um, components, the, they actually all coexist and in parallel. And depending on the use case, it may make sense to push data via send mechanism, such as direct. Another use case may be best suited for query retrieve. So our work is trying to be thoughtful about the different kinds of things that can be measured. Right now, they don't roll up yet nicely 
or neatly into a bow. And that's possibly okay because these multiple mechanisms coexist and we don't necessarily need something that is a drill down dashboard, or maybe we do. That's something that we will investigate through this process. Nicole noted the earlier example of API calls where certain products such as Apple make multiple data calls per day. So in this example, patient facing API volume may not be informative. It may be useful to understand which examples are being used, uh, which applications are being used, by whom, and what type of data is being exchanged. So back to the concept of building blocks. Do we know what mechanism or transport mechanism is being used? Do we know what's being exchanged in terms of the content, so the payload? Is it a structured document like the CCDA that contains US CDI? Or is it using fire? Is it a PDF document? Something else? Who is sending and receiving the data? What's happening with the data once it's available in the EHR? And once it's received or available in the EHR, does it require manual interaction or are there automated patient matching or association capabilities or steps required by a person? So what are the ways that the external data is being used? Do you have to reconcile everything that's being received? What type of exchange data is actually being incorporated or reconciled? And we noticed in our work to date that there is variation on whether metadata is retained at the document level or the data level once data has been reconciled. And that's not due to any sort of certification or national or federal requirement. This is the current state of what we're seeing across products and they do handle those differently. Some products only retain the provenance at the document level and once it's been reconciled, it retains the uh, user information associated with the individual who reconciled the information. So these identify some nuances and differences between health IT products that we need to be thinking about as we think about interoperability measures development. And last, and certainly not least of national importance is what is the impact and use of interoperable data? We've invested as a country in health IT infrastructure. We're continuing to invest in interoperability and coming back to that national objective in MACRA to have a national measure and measurement framework, we have an opportunity to really understand and report on what's happening here, rather than depend on the limited information in user surveys. In wrapping up, we'd like to share an example that highlights why interoperability measurement can be complex. So let's take an example of a PCP seeing a patient in the clinic post discharge from the hospital or the ED. The hospital may have a provider directory of direct addresses of community or referring providers. So the PCP may receive a direct push, and by direct, I mean direct with a capital D of a uh, CCDA. Also, the hospital is likely connected to a regional or state HIE, where the CCDA upon discharge is sent to the exchange. The patient um, the PCP is seeing could be on the panel of patients for which the provider has indicated that that provider sees to receive encounter notifications from the HIE. So now a CCDA is pushed, possibly using direct again, to the PCP from that state level exchange. And last but not least, we're seeing many EHRs and customers default to settings that carry, that query carry, qual carry quality or commonwealth upon patient registration or arrival so now through query retrieve, there's a CCDA that's received from a national exchange network. So as a PCP or staff at the clinic, you're potentially paced with three copies of the same information. What we've noticed is that there's vendor variability in workflow, um, as I noted, uh, some about how EHR products are developing functionality to support reconciliation of clinical information. Some vendors auto match, others don't, some dedupe, while others don't. So when you're looking to measure this type of exchange, what should we measure? Here, there's three transactions, one set of information. Do we count this three times, one time? The interesting thing is we may or may not find ourselves in those neatly cascading measures because by design, maybe all of this is a good thing because data is flowing, which means data is flowing through these multiple paths. But it does present some really interesting challenges when we think about measurement. So in conclusion, we really are looking for insights and involvement 
from the interoperability community to get involved and participate. Um, so if you'd like to participate or learn more, we have a number of venues. So HIMSS is working with EHRA, um, other uh, HIE and interoperability committees, other mechanisms of convening um, provider organizations. Um, we're also working directly with the vendor community conducting interviews. Um, but if you'd like to learn more, like to participate, the email's up here on the screen. It's actually interoperabilitymeasurement at govhealth.com. And we have some questions here on the right that um, to get you thinking around uh, questions we have and we wanna hear insights um, around these potential common and unique use cases so that we can develop ways to measure interoperability that are valuable to all the stakeholders. With that, I'd like to thank you for your time today and we look forward to hearing from you.